Skarmory is returning to Pokemon Draft League with its inclusion in the Indigo Disc DLC, commonly known for its role as a defensive stall Pokemon in OU, specifically on Skarm Bliss teams, its impact on the draft format is a little bit more interesting. In tournament play, it has been a consistent presence in Oras draft tournaments, featuring on 100% of drafts in the last two seasons of DPL. This is not the same for future generations, however. Having gone undrafted in DPL in recent seasons, and the last time it was even drafted in Ultra Sin and Moon being in 2021. Even outside of high-level team tournament play, we see a similar trend where it's basically non-existent in the Sword and Shield metagame and has low usage in Ultra Sin and Moon when accounting for Smogon draft tournaments. So why is this the case? Today we're going to take a look at Skarmory's history in Draft League from a Mon drafted 100% of the time in ORS to basically never drafted over the course of two generations and how that's going to change in the Scarlet and Violet metagame. If you want to see more of these type of videos where we get into the strategic aspects of Draft League, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I've got plenty more of these coming over the next couple of weeks. So why is Skarmory so great? Well, the main thing is going to be its great defensive typing. Steel, even after the nerf, is one of the best defensive types in Pokemon, giving you the ability to resist common types like Dragon, Flying, Grass especially, and the 140 defense gives you the ability to check, honestly, the majority of the physically offensive metagame, the flying type also provides an immunity to spikes and toxic spikes, which in the current Scarlet and Violet metagame is going to be very important, as there are a lot of very common hazard stacking teams. Hazard removal is also of a premium in Auras, which means that Pokemon like Skarmory they can guarantee removal through the sturdy ability, as well as its ability to come in on offensive and defensive threats, often with its defensive typing, makes it of immense value. Having access also to both Spikes and Stealth Rock is kind of a rarity in Oras, which allows you to set up a diversity of hazards to put a lot of pressure on teams with weaker hazard removal. This replay here we're seeing with Kaz and Venno illustrates a great example of how Skarmory can be put to use to get multiple layers of hazards unimpeded, opening up a lot of damage in the mid game to allow Venno's team to break through Kaz's defenses. All of these factors lead to Skarmory having a 55% win rate in the DPL Oras metagame over the last two seasons, which for a defensive Pokemon is very, very solid. So what made Skarmory's usage fall off? Well, in Ultra Sun and Moon, we saw the introduction of a lot of new defoggers, making the role of Skarmory a lot less required, as a lot of offensive Pokemon, such as Hydreigon, gained access to hazard removal. Z-moves also gave a new way for Pokemon that Skarmory normally walled to be able to attack right through it, preventing its ability to set up hazards and remove them effectively. And then mainly in Sword and Shield, the introduction of heavy duty boots really lowered the utility of a dedicated hazard Pokemon. Hazards ended up becoming much more useful on Pokemon such as Greninja that can get hazards up while threatening offensive pressure, keeping momentum of the game. Losing momentum to set up hazards that accumulate usually minimal damage over the course of a game ends up being a losing play, so where we saw an Ultra Moon, hazard removal becoming a lot lower opportunity cost to get on other Pokemon, hazard removal becomes a higher opportunity cost here to actually run on dedicated Pokemon. This resulted in hazard removal becoming not really as prevalent in the metagame. The need for an ultimate hazard controller as a role was usually left to the item heavy duty boots when required, and we still had that abundance of defog options from Ultra Sin and Moon's introduction in the metagame as well, which meant you were most likely to continue to use those offensive Pokemon in this role to keep offensive momentum as much as possible. This trend is really highlighted by the fact that after going undrafted in DPL at 14 points, it was dropped to 13 points the season after and continued to be undrafted, which really shows the fact that the utility of Skarmory just was not there in the previous two generations. So what is different about Scarlet and Violet compared to the previous two formats that we just had? Well, the main difference between those two generations and this one is that we're kind of in a similar situation right now to Oras and that there are not many solid hazard removals, making the opportunity cost of not getting one a lot higher than an Usum, for example, and more closer to Oras. Teams also require a lot more complex diversity of items to be used in defensive situations in this generation. For example, if you have a team with Sneasler and Skarmory, defensive checks are put into a really difficult position where they either have to run Covert Cloak to protect against Dire Claw's hacks ability, or Heavy Duty Boots to prevent 2 KOs from Sneasler after Spikes and Rocks. This gives Skarmory the ability to play a similar role to that of what it did in ADV, where it can be used as a defensive check to keep Pokemon, and then using these situations as an opportunity to get up Spikes and Stealth Rocks up throughout the course of the game to allow that to put pressure on common defensive and offensive cores. So, should you actually draft this Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet? Well, as I said, we're moving to a similar situation to Oras where hazard removal is a lot less prevalent and heavy duty boots is slightly dropping in popularity due to requirements for other items on defensive Pokemon. This means Skarmory's role is starting to open up just a little bit more. 
the ability for it to play as a lead hazard setting role as well as a defensive pivot and phaser, Skarmory is able to actually leverage some of the utility that it had in previous generations like Oras, making it a little bit more of an appealing pick in this generation. Now you do have to contend with Terra as a mechanic though, as Terra does give the ability, similar to Zemus, to push past Skarmory. The lot of leagues are limiting you to certain types, which allows you to actually play around that a little bit more than you could with Zemus with Skarmory. This being said though, Skarmory's price point will likely need to be adjusted for it to continue to be worth it in your 8 player league drafts. 13 points is still probably a little bit high, especially for this type of role, after seeing it go on drafted in Sword and Shield two seasons in a row, but in your 16 player leagues, I think especially at 13 points, it'll certainly be worth all the points that you get for it, and certainly put your opponent's prep into a lot of difficult situations, especially if you get it with combinations like Sneasler mentioned before, that really put pressure on your opponent's item decisions in the builder. So with that being said, I think Skarmory is going to be a lot better with picking this generation than it was in previous generations, and if you're going into your leagues, I think this one is worth considering having on your draft plans. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you have not already. I've got a lot more strategic videos coming out over the next couple of weeks with the new DLC, and I have a lot more planned in the new year. I will see you all next time, and as always, have a wonderful day.